ever discussed Final Fantasy or anything to do with JRPGs on any online forum, at some point you've come across the statement in one of its variants that Squaresoft was much better than Square Enix. Long before there was a Square Enix, there existed two separate companies, Squaresoft, the creators of Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and many other quality titles, and Enix, who are best known for the Dragon Quest series. These two JRPG giants competed with one another to make the highest quality games possible. In fact, Hironobu Sakaguchi, the creator of Final Fantasy, went as far as to say that one of the big reasons that Final Fantasy VI turned out so good was competition with Dragon Quest. So then why did these two companies merge in the first place? And did somehow two of the best JRPG companies of their day somehow merge together to form something inferior? It all began with Sakaguchi's desire to produce a feature-length film in the form of Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. As Squaresoft's endeavors with CGI within the Final Fantasy game series series had already been so successful, with the games oftentimes featuring a full film's length worth of pre-rendered cutscenes. The idea to transition into a Final Fantasy movie series as well seemed like a relatively good idea, but to create a movie like this in 2001, it was no easy task. In fact, it was the first photorealistic feature-length film to purely use computer animation, which means it was expensive. Like, really expensive like 137 million dollars expensive. A number so big that it would remain the most expensive video game inspired movie until the release of Prince of Persia in 2010. And the investment here would absolutely not pay off, with the movie only making 85 million dollars. Squaresoft would lose 52 million dollars on the project. Things looked pretty bad for Squaresoft at the time, and this is when more talks about a potential merger with Enix began to rise, which Enix actually actually hesitated to do, as Squaresoft was so rapidly losing money. Thankfully, the massive successes of Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts helped stabilize the company, and with that in mind, the merger proceeded. So in April 2003, it was announced that Squaresoft and Enix would be merging the form Square Enix. While some elitist Squaresoft fans act as though Enix somehow infected Squaresoft and caused the company to somehow produce low-quality titles, this is objectively false, as over 80% of the newly merged company's employees were Squaresoft employees. So then, with that being said, what caused the alleged drop in quality among their titles? There are quite a few things, but none of which are directly tied with the merger to Enix itself. The first being the departure of Square Enix CEO and Chair, and Final Fantasy's founding father. The absence of Hironobu Sakaguchi left a void in the company's direction, and alongside of him he took a lot of former Squaresoft employees to form a brand new company, Mistwalker. From there, a brand new president, Yoichi Wada, would emerge. Part of Wada's direction would be utilizing a concept that I personally quite dread, and that concept is called polymorphic content. You see, the traditional, what they call secondary content model is when you release a game, and if that game is successful, you release more content like spin-offs, movies, and anime, etc. The polymorphic content model basically boils down to you putting out a whole bunch of crap all at once, and doing so around the time when you release the game. If you recall Final Fantasy XV Universe, launching a game, a movie, mobile games, an anime, and several other pieces of content in quick succession, that's polymorphic content. So with that in mind, Square Enix decided to expand existing intellectual properties, which birthed the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. This made sense as Squaresoft had already started the trend with Final Fantasy X-2. Yes, you heard that right, X-2 was developed under Squaresoft, not Square Enix. Final Fantasy X-2 started development in late 2001, and the game's Japanese release date was March 2003. Square Enix was formed in April 2003. In fact, the initial Japanese launch version says Squaresoft on the box, not Square Enix. Although this would later be updated in subsequent releases like the greatest hits and international versions, so yeah. The last major Squaresoft game was Final Fantasy X-2. For all of you who described this game as why the merger was the beginning of the end. As I stressed before, the merger itself did not affect game quality, but one thing that did was Square Enix's proprietary engines, Crystal Tools and Luminous Engine. Crystal Tools, the engine used for the highly acclaimed and beloved Final 
Final Fantasy 13 and 14 1.0, as well as PS3's most finished and complete game ever, Final Fantasy vs. 13, caused numerous issues for the company. In March 2010, producer Yoshinori Kitase even admitted that developing the engine might have been a mistake, as it caused vast difficulties and delays in the game. They were trying to accommodate all the potential games that would utilize the engine, which is the smart and objectively right thing to do, as the engine would struggle meeting the specification for other games. And well, what did they do? Well, they ended up developing the engine overly specific to Final Fantasy 13, and so when the time came to develop Final Final Fantasy vs 13 and Final Fantasy 14 1.0, there were massive difficulties. And then they just did the exact same thing again with Final Fantasy 15's Luminous Engine, which again, numerous delays, technical issues, just to have a proprietary engine. So perhaps you now see why Kingdom Hearts 3, Dragon Quest 11, and Final Fantasy 7 Remake were all instead developed as Unreal Engine 4 games. It's very likely that Squaresoft wouldn't have changed very much from Square Enix had the two companies not merged. It's also worth noting that the Enix side of the company probably produces more successful games critically than the Square side does, such as Dragon Quest XI-S, which is currently sitting at a 90% on Metacritic, a score that Final Fantasy hasn't seen in quite some time outside of the 14 expansions. Such things as shuffling directors around and using half-baked proprietary engines were all a result of factors not necessarily to do with the merger itself, and the reason the merger did happen in the first place was the result of Square Enix's own misdirection with Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. The real reasons Final Fantasy hasn't been on track is a loaded question, and one that we might be answering in a video coming up soon and hopefully something we'll find resolution with with the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake. So Ultima Weapons, I want to know, what do you think? Do you think Square Enix will finally be able to get back on track with Final Fantasy VII Remake? Subscribe, click the bell icon, and let me know in the comments below. And if you've been enjoying my content, be sure to check out the Patreon for the Night Sky Prince, where people like Odin Strongheart have directly supported the channel. And if you're interested in doing the same, be sure to check the link in the description below. Shout out to Odin Strongheart and the rest of the Ultima community. <laughs> Tambidatsukimini